from Nelson Mandela to Britain's Queen to the Pope. Addressing the United States Congress is a rare invitation for foreign leaders. It's also fairly uncommon for US presidents to address a joint session of Congress. That's lawmakers from the House of Representatives and the Senate together in one chamber. Presidents tend to only head up here to Capitol Hill once a year for their State of the Union address. And Donald Trump's first joint address has extra significance. This is only the third time in the modern political era that Republicans have controlled both chambers in Congress and the presidency. Of course, many Democratic Party presidents through the ages have enjoyed this kind of dominance as well. But they've also been hamstrung when Congress is controlled by the opposition party, as Barack Obama discovered. I'm beginning a new effort to fix as much of our immigration system as I can on my own, without Congress. Obama resorted to White House executive orders to enact policies that Congress opposed. That's not a problem for Trump and the Republicans, who have the power to undo much of Obama's work. Their agenda includes abolishing Obama's landmark health care reform, building a wall on Mexico's border and tax cuts. Trump even wants to abolish an entire government department, the Environmental Protection Agency, amid opposition to the Paris Accord limiting climate change. Republicans will maintain this rare dominance of both the legislature and the White House until 2018. That's when the next congressional elections take place. And Democrats are likely to have a much tougher battle. In the Senate, they'll be defending 25 seats. Their Republican opponents, just eight. Owen Fairclough, CGTN, Washington.